Hello second grade and welcome to your clay project. Today we are going to build our clay pumpkins inspired by the artist Yayoi Kusama. So let's take a look at the materials that I have on the table in front of me. So I have one of the mess mats on the table so that way we can keep the mess from the clay on the mat. Um, I do have a cup right here that is filled with slip which is like a watery clay that we'll use like a glue. I also have two wooden tools, a popsicle stick and a skewer. We'll be using both of those to help assemble our project. And then I also have the clay. Now this is special clay that we have. This is clay that is going to go into a kiln in order to bake and harden it. Now, after it goes into the kiln, it can never turn back into the soft, squishy clay that you have in front of you today. It will be completely hardened. It's like when you put cookie dough into the oven and it turns into a cookie, it'll never turn back into the dough. It'll just be a cookie until you eat it. So we wanna make sure that whatever we make today, we're super happy with because that's the shape that it's always going to have. All right, so before we start on our project, we have to do something called wedge the clay. Sometimes clay comes in the box and it has some air bubbles in it. The kiln does not like when there are air bubbles in it, so we have to get rid of it. The easiest way for us to do that, and this is the fun part, is to take the clay and just squish it in our hands. We wanna do that for at least 30 seconds in order to make sure that all of the air bubbles are out of the clay. Like I said, the kiln does not like if there are air bubbles in the clay. We do not want anything bad to happen to our projects, which means we want to make sure that we wedge our clay correctly before we get to work. All right, I'm going to do it for a few more seconds. Sometimes when you're wedging, you might even hear a little bubble pop in your clay, which is always fun, and it means you've done your job correctly. All right, aside from getting the air bubbles out, your clay will also probably be a little bit warmer and softer. Now, before we start making our pumpkin, we're going to tear a little piece off and set it off to the side. That's gonna be our stem, and we will come back to that. Now, in order to make our pumpkin, we wanna take our clay, and we wanna start by forming it into at least a mostly round ball. It does not need to be perfectly smooth or perfectly round yet. We just wanna mostly get it there. Okay, like this is fine for now and yours can look like that too. Now, you might be thinking, okay, great, I have the shape of a pumpkin, but you know what? This is a solid piece of clay. And that's another thing that the kiln doesn't really like. We need to have a little bit more space so that the clay can dry and fire correctly. So what we're going to do, we're gonna take our thumb and we're going to push a little space, a little hole into the bottom of the pumpkin. Hold it in your other hand, go nice and slow. Okay, so I want you to see what I did right there. I have a little hole on the bottom like this and something that you can do with your thumb on the inside and your fingers on the outside really gently, really slowly. I'm not making super big movements. You can pull it open just a tiny bit more. Now here's the nice thing. Even though we have that hole on the bottom, when we set it down, we can't see the hole at all and it's still going to look like a pumpkin. All right, so at this point, you can go ahead, use your fingers and smooth out your clay a little bit more. Make sure it's nice and clean, exactly how you want it to look. I'm gonna speed through this part and check back with you guys in just a second. All right, so I have gone ahead and smoothed out my pumpkin. It does not, I don't think, it needs to be completely smooth because we know that actual pumpkins are not completely smooth. I'm fine if it has a little bit of texture on it. All right, speaking of texture, a very important part of pumpkins are the texture or the ridges that we see on them. So that is something that we're going to add right now. And for that, you need your popsicle stick. We're actually going to take the skinny side of the popsicle stick and we're going to use that to make our lines or ridges on the pumpkin. It's actually super easy. Again, you're gonna take that skinny side, you're going to stick it into the clay 
and rock it back and forth. And look at that, you have a perfect pumpkin ridge from doing that. You can go ahead and do that a few times onto your pumpkin. You can have the lines a little further apart or a little closer together. It's totally up to you. You might want to be extra careful and put your fingers on the inside of it so that way your pumpkin doesn't collapse. We can't have that happening. So go ahead and add in the texture or the ridges on your pumpkin. All right, so I have my ridges going all the way around. I left a little bit more space in between mine than maybe you did, and that's totally fine. All of our pumpkins can look a little bit different. All right, I'm gonna put the popsicle stick off to the side. I'm gonna set my pumpkin down, and then I'm going to grab that little piece that we saved. This is gonna be the stem. Now, I pulled off a bigger piece than I might end up needing, so if you have a little bit of extra, that's okay. Um, you don't need to use all of this. So we're missing the stem for the top of our pumpkin, of course. So all we want to do, we want to take this little piece and in our hands, we want to roll it back and forth. I'm also going to roll it gently on the table, not too hard. We don't want it to stick on the mat. All right. I'm also going to tap the stem on the bottom so we get a nice flat edge. That means it'll be a little bit easier to stick it on here. I also think that my stem is too tall at the moment, so I'm going to pull off about half of it, and then I'm going to just take a moment to form this a little bit more like how I want it. Okay, and I think that that, I'll tilt this up so you can see. I am happy with that. I think that works really well. All right, now we probably know we can't just stick uh, our stem on here. It's not going to stay. Look at how easily that comes off. So we have to do a couple extra steps in order to make sure that our pieces are actually stuck together. So we are going to do something called the four S's. The first thing that we're going to do is score. Now we might remember doing this on old clay projects, but we are going to take our skewer and we are going to make little lines, kind of like a mini almost like tic-tac-toe board, but with some extra lines. We're going to do that on both pieces of clay where they're going to touch. So I have it on the bottom of the stem, and I'm also going to make some little crisscross lines on the top of my pumpkin. So that is score. The second thing that we're going to do is slip. Now slip, for clay that goes into the kiln is a mixture of clay and water. That's all this is, clay and water mixed together. So you can use one of the tools if you want to. I have zero problem just putting my finger into the slip and dabbing a little bit of slip onto both of my score marks. That's the second S. The third S, always fun, is stick. We're going to stick them together. You might get a teeny tiny bit of slip that oozes out the side. That's okay. We're going to take care of that in just a second. All right, so that was the third S. The fourth S is smooth. We want to take a moment to make sure that we smooth out that slip, that we don't have too much of a seam there, that maybe we can't see those lines where the two pieces meet too much. A little bit is fine, but not too much. So I am just using my finger to rub those together. If you're having a hard time doing it with your finger, you can also take one of the tools, maybe roll it back and forth, can help smooth that area out a little bit more as well. And then, and here's the best part, let's make sure that it's actually stuck on there. I don't wanna pick it up because it's not dry yet, but I think a really good way to make sure that it's stuck on there is just to flip your project upside down. And as you can see, mine is not going anywhere. So I have formed my clay pumpkin. The last and very important thing that we need to do, we need to make sure that our names are on here. I am going to take my skewer and I am going to write my my initials J for my first name and then S for my last name because we want to make sure that we know which project belongs to who 
after you have finished sculpting your project, we're going to let them dry completely so that they can be fired in the kiln. Nice job, everybody.